This is the Bamboo Lab P1S, a Core XY 3D printer released a few months ago that's basically an upgraded version of their P1P. Under the hood they're near identical, but the P1S comes fully enclosed with a chamber filter and a tool head cable chain like on their X1 Carbon. Although I primarily interface with the printer from the slicer, one of the peeves in my P1P review was that the full color touchscreen was removed on the P1 series. This is the main complaint I've seen from quite a few others, and someone decided to do something about it. You may remember the BL LED controller we looked at a few months back. This added LEDs with status functionality to the Bamboo Lab printers using MQTT. Well, today we're looking into another project that I've been following for some months now called X-Touch. This is an add-on touchscreen for your Bamboo Lab printer using an inexpensive ESP32 combo screen. Paired with a printable mount, this gives you full access to the stock screen while providing additional control and monitoring functions. On top of that, this does not require any hardware modifications, which is a huge plus. In today's video, we will take a look into the project, what the current state of X-Touch is, and we will go through the process of getting this installed. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. Let's start by looking at the current X-Touch version and what it allows you to do. At the time of recording, the latest release is 0.8.17 and the project is in closed beta but will be public by the time this video is live. Design-wise, the layout of the interface highly resembles the one from the X1 Carbon down to color scheme, icons, and location. The home screen tells you if an AMS or camera is connected and lets you toggle the light on or off, along with setting hot end and bed temperatures. The next page is the temp page, which also lets you set the hot end and bed temperatures in addition to controlling any of the fans. Clicking on the fan you want to adjust will let you specify a percentage from 0 to 100. Next we have the jog or move page. Here you can move each axis in 1 or 10 millimeter increments along with homing the printer. X and Y arrows are visible when you click on the tab, and pressing Z in the top right corner will give you control of the Z axis. The filament page lets you load or unload filament along with extrude and retract. Load and unload currently only works if you have a single spool and not with the AMS, but I was told that this is currently being worked on. Lastly, the settings page lets you control the backlight, screen sleep time, if it should wake on a print, and lets you invert colors. You can unlink the X-Touch from your printer here to link to another, which can be handy to control multiple printers with just one screen. You can also enable a chamber sensor option here. The P1 series of printers don't have a chamber sensor, but with this upgrade you can wire one into the screen directly, which can be really handy for printing with higher temp filaments. Updating the screen can be done manually, but you also have the option to enable over-the-air updates to automatically push firmware updates to the screen. During a print, time and layers are displayed, and you can also pause, stop, change mode, or adjust the temps and cooling while a print is running. For anyone wanting to install the X-Touch, let's go over what's required, which luckily isn't very much. The main thing you'll need is of course the screen, which is a 2.8 inch ESP32 combo. The one I ordered was from AliExpress, which I will have linked in the description. As long as you go with the same board model that I have on screen, you can also get them on Amazon for around $20 to $25. In addition, you will need a microSD card between 1 and 32 gigabytes. Anything over 32 will not work. I was told there had been issues with a few different SanDisk cards. I've been using a Kingston microSD card without any issues, so that is what I'm going to recommend. The last thing needed is a micro USB cable that is used both to flash the board and to power the screen. If you plan to power the X-Touch from the printer directly like I'm doing, you're going to want a pretty short cable. I think mine is somewhere between one and a half to two feet long, and that is plenty. Let's move on to getting the X-Touch set up. The first thing we need to do is create a file for a microSD card that will contain our Wi-Fi credentials. Start by inserting the card into your computer and formatting it. On Windows, just right-click on the drive, select Format, and make sure you format it as FAT32. 
Next, open a new document in Notepad and head to the Axtouch GitHub repository, which I will have linked in the description. From here, you are looking for the section talking about a configuration file. Either highlight and copy or click the copy button on the right side to copy the text. Then paste this text back into your blank document. We need to replace the your SSID name and your SSID password section with our wireless network name and password. Make sure to leave the parentheses surrounding them and also double check that spelling and case are correct. Then click File Save As. From the Explorer window, navigate to your micro SD card and then click the Save as Type dropdown. This needs to be changed from the default.txt to all files. Name the file wifi.json in all lowercase and save it to your micro SD card. Then eject the card and install it into your ESP32 screen. Before we connect the screen to our computer, we need to install a driver. From the link in the description, head to SparkFun's website and click drivers on the right side menu. Then click on the driver for your operating system to download the needed installer. Then click on the file and follow the instructions on screen to install the driver. On Windows, a small box will pop up and you just need to click install. This should only take a minute and then you're ready to move on. Plug your micro USB cable into the port on the screen and the other end into your computer. Then open a web browser and head to the web installer URL. I'll have the final URL in the description below because the one that I'm using is from the closed beta. On the installer page, click connect. I originally was using Brave Browser, which threw an error, so I switched over to Microsoft Edge. When you click connect, a window will pop up, and if you install the drivers and your screen is connected, you will see a COM port listed for your screen that you can connect to. If there are multiple, you can unplug and reconnect your screen to see which of those COM ports disappears and then reappears. Once connected, click Install Xtouch on the web page to begin the installation. You'll get one to two warnings letting you know it will erase the current firmware and write a new firmware which you need to agree to. The installation process will only take a minute or two and when complete, a confirmation will be displayed on screen letting you know that it was installed successfully. At this point, you can disconnect it and move on to mounting it or pair it with your printer, which is what I ended up doing right away. The first time the screen power is on after flashing it, you'll have to calibrate the screen by selecting the two targets in the corners. The screen will then search for any printers on your network. In my case, it found both the X1 Carbon as well as my P1S. Click on the printer that you want to link and then press the check mark. It will then ask you for the access code, which is unique to your printer and something that you'll need to get off of your printer screen. From your printer, navigate to the settings page and click on WLAN. At the bottom of this page, you can find the access code. Enter this code into the Xtouch and click the check mark to initiate pairing. This is a super quick process and the last step for connecting the Xtouch to your printer. For mounting the screen, you have quite a few different options. I went with the P1 touchscreen model on printables from Drew Dedu, but there are a handful of other options available. Overall, I'm happy with this model, but I ended up ditching the glueable plate and instead went with a single faceplate that is dual color. I also didn't have the right M2 hardware, so I drilled the holes for slightly larger M2.5 screws. Overall, I think the end result looks super clean. Although you can power the X-Touch externally, there is a 5 volt full-size USB port behind the stock screen on the inside of the printer. From the mounting point, I fed the USB cable through the tiny opening on the top of the printer and plugged it directly into the P1S's free port. This removes the need for any external power and ensures that the screen automatically powers on whenever the printer turns on. I have been really happy with this mod, and although I do interface with the printer primarily from the slicer, I can see this being a very popular upgrade. A few additional things I did want to point out is that if you are having any issues during the installation process, there is a troubleshooting section over on the GitHub page. On top of that, I will also have the official Discord linked in the description below. Also, this is a third-party upgrade using MQTT, and it's entirely possible that through a future firmware update, it could break the compatibility. Hopefully any changes made could just be fixed via a patch, but it is something that you should know up front. The good news is again that the screen's cost is around $20 and it is just an ESP32 screen that you can use for a ton of different projects if it comes down to it. As far as licensing goes for this project, I talked to the developer a couple of times and they are still deciding on what they want to do. The biggest concern seemed like somebody potentially taking the project and trying to sell it as their own. 
Due to this, it sounded like a fairly restricted license was going to be put in place, but again, this had not been decided at the time of me recording this video. If you have any questions regarding this, my recommendation would be to reach out to the developer directly, and I think the best route to do that is through the official Discord channel. This is a very cool project, and it blows my mind to see what is possible with just using MQTT. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do end up installing an X-Touch, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you have any cool ideas or feature requests, I would love to hear those as well. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.